Hey, I, Tidy Eddie's Guy, will be having some assistance from a greatly special character. Yahoo! <laughs> it's a me, Mario! Hey, Super Mario Mario. <laughs> you sure know how to make an entrance. Hello, and thank you so much, Tidy Eddie's Guy. Also, hello to everybody around the world watching this episode. And thank you so much for supporting the Super Mario series, Nintendo, and especially Tidy 80s Guys 80s and 90s Video World! Woohoo! Haha! <laughs> and also, let's not forget all the support for my behind the scenes series for Video World, Tie Me Tie Talk. Oh no, we definitely can't forget that, so thank you so much everybody for watching that series too. So, because the biggest star of this episode is the highly anti-issipated, super duper tuper anti-issipated Nintendo Switch video game Super Mario Odyssey, I'm allowing Super Mario Mario to sing the theme song for Video World in a very special way while I hold the sign. Yippee! <laughs> you can go ahead now, Mario. Okie dokie! I'm also going to tell you the title of this episode. Episode 24, The Super Mario Odyssey Greatness Party, The Season 3 Preview Party, and more! Waha! I got it! I finally rolled my eyes properly! <laughs> I rarely ever get that many rolling of the R's right. <laughs> well, I'll see you all again soon, here in a little bit. Hey everybody, I am the one, the only, Tidy 80s Guy, and welcome to episode 24 of Tidy 80s Guys, 80s and 90s, a video world, yeah! It isn't just the 24th episode, it's also the Season 2 finale. This will also be the very last episode that is filmed with this cheaply made $7 Chinese webcam. See how crazily happy that makes me? That means that after this episode, I plan for there to be no more really low sound quality and bad picture quality. But more about that and the fate of this $7 webcam later in this episode. I had changed into my back in the day Nintendo Entertainment System shirt. The one that I bought from my local Walmart before the Season 1 finale to wear in the Season 1 finale. I'm wearing this in celebration of the upcoming Super Mario Odyssey Greatness Party. In fact, there will be two great Friday night parties for the first time, T-Y-M-E, ever. In the second half of this episode, it will be the season three preview party. Super Mario Mario will be helping me out 
during the Super Mario Odyssey Greatness Party, while Super Luigi Mario, Louis Fluis the Flying Harmonica Fish, and Doc Brown all sit at the kitchen table eating 80's Granite Falls Giovanni's Pizza and late 90's Lenore North Carolina Papa John's Pizza and drink plenty of 80's and 90's A&W Root Beer. With all that said, let's get this first great Friday night party started. Welcome everybody to the first ever Super Mario Odyssey Greatness Party! I invited a total of 64 guests in honor of Super Mario 64, which the gameplay of Super Mario Odyssey is based on. Super Mario 64 came out in 1996 and became one of the best selling Super Mario titles ever, and the very first 3D Mario adventure. Then came the sequel, Super Mario Sunshine in 2002 for the Nintendo GameCube. And Super Mario Odyssey is also based on that with its much bigger worlds and more exploration than in Super Mario 64. I still think that Super Mario Sunshine is the worst 3D Mario game, but it's not a terrible game. And just recently, I looked back on some videos on it and, and it looks like I'd enjoy it a lot more now than I did back then. It was just way too much repetition back then. It was just a mess to me. Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 on the Wii were classics. But then we got that weird 3DS game, Super Mario 3D Land, and the Wii U game, Super Mario 3D World. And in both of these, we had 3D Mario, but with a timer. I don't want a timer when I'm trying to explore and have a good time. But now... Finally, we are back to the traditional 3D Super Mario platformer, which also means no holding down a run button to run. Yay! Nintendo! 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 Yay! Super Mario Odyssey will have the biggest, most explorable worlds in 3D Super Mario history. This time, T-Y-M-E, instead of collecting Power Stars or Shine Sprites, you will be collecting Power Moons. There's also going to be hundreds to collect. Not just 120, but hundreds. As I had predicted in a past episode, there would be so many coins that collecting them would not refill your health. And as I also predicted, collecting a heart would refill one unit of health. Every time Mario dies, he loses 10 coins, so there are no lives. That means no one-up mushrooms. That is the first time ever for a 3D Super Mario game. Also, all the famous power-ups are gone in place of capturing. When Mario throws his cap at inanimate objects, enemies, and even a human, he takes over them and can use their abilities to reach different areas that he wouldn't normally be able to and solve many different puzzles. So there you go. That's a lot of major changes to the 3D Super Mario series. There's one more major change to the 3D Super Mario series that I have to mention. In past games like Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2, whenever Mario collected a Power Star or Shine Sprite, he would be forced out of the world he was in and would have to leap back into it to collect another one. So for the first time ever in a traditional 3D Super Mario platformer, you can stay in a world as long as you like and collect as many power moons as you like. That is something that players have asked for for many years. With all these changes, this is even going to top all of Rare's 3D platformers. It even tops the cool transformations from the Banjo-Kazooie series. 
with many, many different things that you can capture in this game. I just don't think that this will be one of the best 3D platformers. I think this will be the greatest 3D platformer yet. And greatly special link number one, it's the debut trailer from earlier this year for Super Mario Odyssey. And greatly special link number two, it's the much more exciting trailer from E3 2017 for Super Mario Odyssey. And if you haven't seen either of those trailers, I want you to pause this right now and go watch them both. Then when you're done watching each of them several times, as you're probably going to want to do because they're that cool! Unpause this video and can tie in you watching. Welcome back and I hope that you really enjoyed those videos because millions of people have already enjoyed them. So what's the story of the game? Well in this one Bowser has kidnapped Peach again but this time he plans to marry her. Mario then crushes Bowser and Princess Peach's wedding. Bowser and Peach are in their fancy wedding attire. And Bowser throws his fancy spiked top hat at Mario and appears to knock him off the airship down into the world far below. Then Bowser crushes Mario's cap under his foot. Then it seems that Mario wakes up in the Cap Kingdom where he meets a magic white top hat named Cappy. And Cappy captures Mario's cap so Mario and Cappy can work together to stop the big royal wedding and rescue Princess Peach from Bowser. By collecting many power moons to power Mario's airship called the Odyssey, the duo of Mario and Cappy will be able to travel all the way to where Bowser and Princess Peach's wedding is. Power moons are a different color depending on which kingdom that you're in. So this time around, these are not called worlds, but kingdoms. So there you go. That's the story. And this game has more story than any 3D Super Mario game yet. Up next, it's the Super Mario Odyssey World Tie or You know, tour. As I, with the help of Mario take you on a tie or of the ten kingdoms revealed so far in Super Mario Odyssey! The tie or of each kingdom will only be a short preview because I don't want to spoil too much of the game nor do I want this video to be way too long which it's already long enough as it is. There are also several kingdoms that we know little to nothing about. So I'll be doing some guessing on those. So anyway, Odyssey, yes see, Odyssey, yes see, Odyssey, yes see, Odyssey, yes see, Odyssey, Odyssey, Odyssey. <laughs> Jump up, superstar is a very catchy tune. <laughs> so for greatly special link number three, it will take you to the full. Jump Up Superstar from Super Mario Odyssey. So, here's the world tie or. <laughs> Mario crash lands into the Cap Kingdom at night, but maybe landing in a bush or even on Cappy himself. The Foggy Kingdom appears to be based on London, England, especially with all the top hat shaped houses and the little town of Bonneton nearby. This black, white, and gray kingdom will most likely serve as the tutorial level for Mario. I think that the first thing Mario will be able to capture is a frog, and this is how Cappy will explain the capturing mechanic. It also looks like in Bonneton is the broken down Odyssey airship. So maybe with one power moon it will be able to be restored. Hopefully there will be more than just one power moon to collect. 
but unfortunately I see this kingdom as being a lot smaller than the others. One question remains, will this kingdom stay in monochrome or will it eventually be brightly colored maybe later on in the game? Hmm. Alright, it's time to sail through the skies in the Odyssey to the next kingdom. I'm going to climb lots of skyscrapers and check out the amazing views. <laughs> Welcome to the Metro Kingdom, the first main kingdom of the game. Here lies New Donk City, which is based off of New York City. It is filled with references to the Donkey Kong Country series, and the mayor of this city is somebody very important from Mario's past. It is here where Mario is introduced to the Crazy Cat Shop, where he uses the gold coins and the regional purple coins to purchase a variety of different clothing and items that he finds throughout the game. In the Metro Kingdom, Mario rides a scooter plays jump rope, climbs skyscrapers, travels through power lines, and he will also discover that one man's trash is another man's treasure. So let's sail off to the third kingdom. I'm going to explore the inverted pyramid. Mario lands in a vast desert kingdom, but strangely it is freezing cold, with large and small ice crystals dotting the lands. This kingdom is based on Mexico in the deserts of Egypt. The townspeople are known as Tostarinans. They have sugar skull heads, wear sombreros, ponchos, and love to shake maracas. You'll explore mysterious ruins, such as the world famous Inverted Pyramid which is a pyramid that was built to be upside down. You can also pay the enchanted animal statue known as the Jaxi to carry you across much tougher areas. But watch out because when you're steering Jaxi, it moves very fast. Also, what caused the desert to become so cold? And what dangers await you at night? Now it's time, T-Y-M-E, to sail off to the fourth kingdom. Let's see what secrets are in the deep forest. <laughs> Mario finally decided to take a break from hot desert treasure hunting in exchange for deep forests, worn down old factories, streams to splash in, and relax in the cool waters of a pond. All this is inside a biosphere. This kingdom highlights the realism of a beautiful forest. I think that it's also based on the United States, with the factories that sit in the middle of the beautiful land that pollute and destroy it. The flowers here are grown by robots known as steam gardeners. There's also rumors of a great beast that has been spotted in the darkest depths of the forest. On a note that's not scary, Mario can capture a creature known as an uproot to use the plant's power to reach things that he can't get otherwise. On to the fifth kingdom! Oh! There's so many delicious foods! I am going to have lots of pizza and lots of more foods! Yahoo! <laughs> Whoops, sorry about that. I meant to have the yellow shirt on to do that kingdom intro, but it turned out to be a very happy accident because the colors of the luncheon kingdom stand out better against a darker color. Anyway, after hours and hours and hours of collecting power moons and chasing after Bowser, Mario has built up a greatly big appetite. So he has decided to visit the luncheon kingdom. It also happens to be his next stop around the world. The Luncheon Kingdom is based on European cuisine and formal dining. 
The kingdom is populated with fork creatures who are surrounded by lands made of giant food that are all brightly colored and covered with jagged edges. The graphics of this kingdom will remind many of the days of Super Mario 64 and the Nintendo 64. Mario will also be able to capture a lava bubble so he can swim safely through the lava with the clothing of a chef. Mario will be allowed entrance to certain areas. He will also be able to capture a hammer brother who is throwing pans. Yes, Mario can throw frying pans in this level. Is that making a lot of you hungry out there? Well, feel free to pause the video, go grab some Papa John's pizza with some A&W root beer, and rejoin me in a little bit for Kingdom 6. Due to some major technical difficulties in this video, I'm having to speed things up a lot. That in a Nintendo Direct that focuses on Super Mario Odyssey will be released on Wednesday, September 13th at 6 p.m. Eastern. So for greatly special link number 4, it will take you to the video presentation for that. So because we're running short on time, I have typed up previews for Kingdoms 6 through 10 in a very special location. So pause the video and read all that. Okay everybody, it's 11.24 p.m. and the Super Mario Odyssey Greatness Party is over. It was supposed to end at 11 o'clock, but ran over a bit. Anyway, it's now time, T-Y-M-E, for the Season 3 Preview Party! Yay! I've got back on my bright green t-shirt that Doc Brown brought me back from 1985 when he took his DeLorean time machine back to 1985 before my 80s and 90s Video World series began. It's also the very first shirt that I ever wore for Video World. So I thought it would be very appropriate to wear for this Season 3 preview party. First off, it's the Classic Sodes. I first mentioned this back in Episode 22. Classic Sodes are any episodes from Season 1 and 2 of Video World and Season 1 of Tiny Ty Talk. But let's face it, after Episode 6 of Video World, it was a mess. So I can't call them Classic Sodes. Instead, I'll be calling them 80s and 90s Video World or Tiny Tie Talk old episodes. I will be promoting these through special links in Season 3 and beyond. Next, I have the Logitech C920 HD Pro Webcam. In Season 3 and beyond, I'll be able to give you hopefully much better sound an amazing visual quality in comparison to this cheap Chinese $7 webcam that I have been using for the past two seasons of this and the only season of Tiny Tie Talk. This also means with the much better audio, I won't have to use so many captions for Louis Flores the Flying Harmonica Fish who can be difficult to understand what he says. With the cheap audio of the webcam I have been using, I've had to use captions many times so people could understand what the characters were saying. I wanted to wait till season 3 to film in HD because I wanted a big rebirth of Tidy 80s Guys 80s and 90s Video World. I also wanted to give another chance for the characters of Video World to shine much brighter by filming them in HD. The first episode of season 3, episode 25, will be a complete remake of the very first episode of Video World. I'm planning it to be a really cool episode that I think my loyal fans and many new fans will appreciate it a lot. Surprise! Hey everybody, it's me, Louis Flores, the Flying Harmonica Fish. I've got a greatly special announcement to make. In Season 3, I'll finally be starring in my own episode. So for the first time ever, it's just going to be me as the only 
everyone in an episode and in HD. <laughs> bye bye. Supplies. Hello, it's a me, Luigi. I have missed you so much. See, me and my brother Mario have been very busy attending Super Mario Odyssey meetings in Japan. But my big announcement for Season 3 is that I too will be starring in my own episode. Yippee! Yep! Ooh! <laughs> Okie dokie! Bye bye! See how hard it can be to understand what characters are saying using this cheap camera? That's why the HD webcam will give all the characters of Video World a much, much better chance to shine brighter than they've ever shown before. As for Doc Brown, it's been greatly difficult to have him appear in episodes. In season one, we couldn't reach an agreed negotiation of payment for him to be in the season. In season two, Amblin Entertainment and Universal kept changing the prices of what they wanted for Doc Brown to appear in the episodes. At one point, they wanted a million dollars per episode and it was too expensive to have him in much of season two. Now we've reached an agreement. The Super Mario Brothers will be paying $300,000 per episode that Doc Brown appears in in season three, because I definitely don't have that kind of money. So that way you'll be able to see more of Doc Brown. There will again be 12 episodes for season three. Now comes the more part of this episode. The release date for another 3D platformer that is also coming to the Nintendo Switch was revealed as Tuesday, October 24th, 2017. The name of the game is Poi by Polykid Games. In Poi, you play as a young boy or girl in search of special medals, dig up secrets, with your shovel, and more. So if you enjoyed Super Mario 64, Poi might be a very worthy addition to your collection. So in the final greatly special link of this episode, greatly special link number five, it is the Nintendo Switch trailer for Poi Explorer Edition. Anyway, that's it for episode 24, the very last of the old episodes. So have a great day or night depending on where you are and be fantastically chipperific. Bye bye and see you soon in the first ever HD Season 3!